the whale shark is such a charismatic species and in many countries like the Philippines for example that they've, they've actually embraced the occurrence of the whale shark they protected special areas for the whale shark this way of connecting people uh, to a species a symbol of what the ocean represents makes the whale shark a symbol of our oceans Uh, the whale shark is the world's largest fish. It's a, it's a type of shark and they grow to almost 20 meters. Uh, they're also rather docile, right? They don't have big teeth like most of your common sharks, but they're still very majestic. And the way they move and the way they appear and disappear out of nowhere is quite, is quite spectacular, really. Whale shark is endangered mostly because of targeted fishing and being caught in bycatch into the 2010s. And we still think that some of that targeted take is still taking place. The presence of the sharks show you that area is important. It's an area that is healthy, that it has a lot of food for the whale sharks and for the other animals. Since I finished my PhD, I knew that I wanted to continue doing our research, but also wanted to do something on conservation and management. So I felt that it was kind of a gap between the government and the people who take decisions and the science. Like the science, it was like um, papers or just journals, scientific, and needs to have this connection with the government and with people. Luckily, we have some clever engineers that have adapted an algorithm for spotting stars in the sky, and we can apply that algorithm to the spots on the body of a whale shark. And it shows us that each whale shark is a little bit different. It has this unique spot pattern. Now, if we take a photo, say, here in Don Sol of a whale shark, and that spot pattern is shared on a global database, uh, and somebody puts the same photo of the same spots from, say, Thailand, it means that we match the movement of that whale shark between Philippines and Thailand. Um, and this is a very powerful resource because in many parts of the world, a lot of the whale shark research actually relies on citizen scientists almost exclusively. So that data can be put to good use for us to understand their movements, their habitat use, residency, connectivity between countries and regions. And we can do that with the power of their spot pattern, their fingerprint, and the power of diverse snorters as citizen scientists. We have been able to see movements between localities, also that the juveniles remain in the Gulf of California and that the animals return year after year to the same location. So actually are the animals that are showing us that these areas are important for them. And thinking on that, it was the way that we started to do the protection of the habitat because we found that it was not like in a random place. It was really important for the animals returning. We have some animals that they, we were able to track for, I don't know, more than 10 years. People oftentimes ask me about the effects, the impacts of COVID-19 on the marine environment. And I can say that it's really been a mixed bag uh, where suddenly there's no, no boats running around and you're suddenly seeing sharks and manta rays in places where they hadn't been seen in 30 years. But on the flip side, an issue which we've seen around the globe is that protected areas, national parks and things, they rely upon having enforcement, they rely upon having patrols. And many of those patrols have stopped during the COVID-19 uh, era, and the bad guys knew that. And, and we absolutely saw a massive uptick in illegal fishing in a number of these areas. Tourism models that build around uh, sustainability, it's very important that we consider all our options when we're making decisions. And this is not just from choosing a sustainable operator if we want to interact with whale sharks, but it all ties into our ethos and our way of life. If we're going to choose sustainable choices for whale shark tourism, how does that align with unsustainable use of, say, plastics or our unsustainable use of fossil fuels? It's all linked into choices. So us as individuals can make a difference, but it has to follow through. It cannot be a shallow decision that works today, it doesn't work for me tomorrow. We need to have that change in behavior, that change of attitude. So 
So we know that whale sharks spend at least 50% of their time in the top 20 meters of the water column. Uh, so when we can overlap, track individual whale sharks, how they use that habitat, and we overlap it with shipping traffic and fishing traffic and other boat traffic, we know that there's a lot or a very high probability that in some hotspots around the world, whale sharks are getting slammed by large vessels. There's a lot of whale sharks that are being killed because of vessel collisions that we're not seeing. And this is because when a whale shark dies, they're negatively buoyant, so the body sinks to the bottom of the ocean. So we do think that vessel collisions is probably one of the most contemporary, important, or largest threats to whale sharks. Climate change potentially has an interesting impact on them as well. We know that they're able to operate in quite cold water, uh, such as what you have in New Zealand, and we know that they can operate in very warm water, like what you have in Indonesia, as warm as 30 degrees Celsius. If temperatures continue to rise and we get to 31, 32 degrees in, in the water, I don't know that the whale sharks would be able to tolerate that. Now they're big enough, of course, that they can swim where they need to, so they'll probably just depart the tropics as climate change makes the, the, the water warmer. But then they're going to run into an issue of is there food in the places where they're going? I think the precautionary principle would just simply say, if we can do our best to mitigate climate change, halt its biggest impacts, that's definitely going to be best for pretty much all life in the oceans. The Whale Shark Day was a day that I'll never forget. I was like, all right, Lono, let's go for a dive. And we are going dive site and turn the boat, and the captain said, the Whale Shark, Whale Shark, Whale Shark in surface. Being a photographer, you kind of, you know that you don't have time to think because moments like this come and go instantly. So I just grabbed my camera and jumped in the water. I was like, oh, like, so excited, like, let's go. And as soon as I got in the water, my heart broke. And Jono told me, ah, oh, there's the plastic big, big rock in the whale shark. The only thing that I could think of at the time was stay with the shark. Stay with it, don't lose it and yell at Lono, like, get a knife, get a knife, get a knife. Lono, go back to the boat, grab a knife. And I jump, uh, you know, in my wetsuit is half, and with fins and mask with knife, and I saw the shark, the shark is going down. And I've never felt more hopeless in my entire life. There I was, watching this incredibly beautiful creature wrapped in plastic, and all I had was a camera. And then out of nowhere, I just see this guy, Lono, my mate Lono, just like powering down, wetsuit still undone. You know, he's got these, the arms are just like flaying by his side and he, he just powers down to this shark. And I hold the rope and I'm cutting, cutting, the shark is going down, it's like eight meters. He's out of breath and he's just grabbing onto this rope and he's cutting for his life. Okay, I don't have any any oxygen, I leave the shark. But I'm decide, okay, what if anything happen, okay, I will cut the shark. And the shark is released and I'm very happy. This is the one of the best day in my life. He just did the final cut and he, he broke the bind. That eventually would have killed the shark. Came to the surface to breathe because he, his lungs were literally burning. And we spent another two days looking for that shark. We've submitted the ID and the patent of that shark to the whale shark research program here. And it's in their database now, and whenever it's seen, we get notified. So it's a very fulfilling ending to that story. I tell my mom, uh, today I, I'm doing big job. <laughs> I saved the shark, the whale shark. This is one of the best day in my life. <laughs>
the best thing we can do is make responsible choices. And that is, it starts with our choices at home, how we educate our children, how they're educated at school, and how we actually turn this around before we hit a climate catastrophe. We need to the rules, otherwise the shark is going. In our new generation, we don't have a shark, we don't have a reef. And we all need to do this. And we, everybody together, we can. And we will, I hope. <laughs>